Father God, we thank you for all things, for you are our everything. Hallelujah. These blessings and others we ask in the mighty matchless name of your son Jesus. And let the house of the Lord say, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can remain standing, we're going into our worship uh, service for this morning. God bless you in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Continue that praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
person. At this time, I ask you to remain standing to your feet as we receive the man of the hour, none other than the Bishop of Day Spring Ministries, Church of God in Christ, Pastor Bill Pimmon. Let's put your hands together and thank God for Pastor Bill Pimmon. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. Truly, we give honor to God who's ahead of our life, to the saints of the Most High God, those of you that are here this morning. We thank God for each and every one of you in your presence here on the day. This is the day the Lord has made. Yes. And we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen, amen. Why? Because our God is awesome. Yes, yes. I don't know if he doesn't need a mountain move, but he can move mountains. Yes. Hey, he can hide you in the rain. You know, he, there's, there's things that God can do that your friend, your loved one, your best friend, your, your spouse can't do, but God can do. Amen. Uh, how, how many ever prayed for a breakthrough in God? How many ever prayed for deliverance in God? Maybe prayed for a loved one who was struggling with some issues and all of a sudden you saw the turnaround. Hey, that's the kind of God he said. Amen. Amen. Listen, you may be seated in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. As I've been praying throughout the week, which direction the Lord has taken me. We've been dealing with a whole lot of things. And so, you know, you have to quiet your mind sometimes to see what God is saying. In fact, I should say you need to quiet your mind all the time to see what God is saying. You know, we have to be careful of the traffic. So much stuff going through our ears and through our minds. And, 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 and you know, we can get a little bit confused sometimes. You know? Get caught up in what we're dealing with and place issues in front of the Lord, and we want to put God first. Amen? Amen. 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 I want to talk to you from the subject this morning, caught in the act. Uh -oh. right. Caught in the act. Amen. Uh, from John, the 8th chapter, verses 1 through 11. Caught in the act. St. John, chapter 8, 1 through 11. You know, we're living in a time where, at least it's been my experience, I see a lot of people condemning they're condemning people, they're speaking ill will of people, they're right. judging people, and sometimes not even knowing the full circumstance. Right. You look at an individual, you look at their situation, and based on your past experience, you put them in that box. Mm -hmm. And through my studies, I've learned that to condemn somebody or to be judgmental of somebody and not really looking at ourselves, but looking at others, is gross hypocrisy. When in reality, the truth, we're told, many of us are just as guilty as the person that we're looking at. There have been some situations recently that have arisen, and you know, you look at the conversations that people have, and you turn the news on, and you got this group pointing the finger at that group. This group talking about how unqualified, how ill prepared, how whatever, whatever, but you know, not, not building them up and realizing that we're all really on the same team, we're human beings. You know, instead of lifting one another up and tearing one another down. I was in the shopping mall yesterday with one of my sons and we were out taking care of some business and had my grandson with us and, and I'm listening to some people standing in line in front of us. And what they were talking about, you know, I'm not going into that conversation, but just hearing it was like, you know, not fully probably understanding somebody's situation, they were just ragging on that individual. You know, just an all out attack and then doing it in front of people. They don't know if we know that person or not. And I found in life a lot of times, the person that I know, that one person may be talking about, may not be the same person that you know. My experience may not have been the same with that person. And so for you to tear them down in front of me causes me to have a perception about somebody that could be untrue. Right. Amen, somebody. Amen. And so, you know, when we look at Scripture as Christians, and we look at what, you know, there was a saying a while back that a lot of people said, what would Jesus do? Uh -huh. And so we have a situation here in the Bible where we see what Jesus would do based on what he did. Amen. So, again, we're... John, the 8th chapter, verses 1 through 11. You know, when we judge others, we are in violation of the Lord's commandments when he stated in Luke 6, 37, judge not, you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. But we are still quick, seemingly, to judge people. You know, I was leaving my brother-in-law's house about a week ago, and I overshot the left, or, yeah, left turn, getting getting to where I could get on the freeway, and almost 
crossed, well, I did. I kind of crossed over into somebody's lane was coming behind me. And stopped at the light, and the guy jumped out of his car. You know, jumped out of his car. I mean, you know, and, 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 and so, you know, I mean, no doubt he was upset. But I mean, you know, sometimes, I mean, I remember the day where I would have done something like that, you know, and, 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 and my wife put her, put, put her hand on my arm and said, don't do nothing because she thought I was going to get out of my car. No, I was going to hit the gas. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're living in a day where, you know, things are dangerous nowadays. You know, I mean, back in the day, you get out and get in a fight. Today, you know, people are killing people for less than that. And so, you know, I'm thinking to myself, hey, I've got my wife with me. I'm, you know, I'm not that guy I was 30 years ago, so I'm just going to move on. You know, but, you know, I don't know the judgment he made. You know, he couldn't realize that, hey, it was almost an accident. Almost an accident. It was an accident. I didn't touch his car. I, I didn't damage anything. It was just an accident. He, he was aware enough to stop. But, you know, people are so quick to jump on either the defensive or overly aggressive that they don't consider other people. You know, we were dealing with a situation, and, and most of you know what this situation was, and our minds went another place, and it was late in the evening, and I was driving. Yeah. But, you know, situations happen so quickly, we don't think. But we judge. I mean, I, I guess the fellow thought, maybe I crossed that line intentionally. Oh, maybe he thought I really wanted to ram my car into his car. You know, I, I, I don't know what he thought, but, you know, he, all I know is it upset him, you know, I want to get out of his car. Now, I could have had the same mind frame as some of these kids out here, some of these people out here got out with my AR-17 or AR-15, whatever you call it, and, and, and blew him his car up. You know what I mean? But, you know, we, 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 we're so quick to want to attack people on little things that we're not thinking that, you know, this could be my life it is. This could be me in that situation causing harm to somebody else on accident. And Jesus, in this situation, in John 8, is confronted with a situation that he has to deal with. And amazingly, it was a trap that they tried to put him in. But it all deals with judging. It all deals with condemnation. You know, sometimes I think we're quick to throw stones when we ought to put our arms out, put our hands out, and, 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 and embrace somebody. Hallelujah. You know, before we stand in judgment, we need to really look at situations that we're dealing with. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we love you today. We thank you for who you are in our lives. We thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you in our shallowness, God, you're there to lift us up. In our insincerity, God, you're there to embrace us, to forgive us, to grace us with your love and your affection, oh God. We just thank you for who you are in our lives. We thank you, God, that you are the light of the world and you shine a light into darkness and we can learn to follow your lead, oh God, that you can be that lamp unto our feet and that light unto our pathway, God. We ask God that you continue to lead us and embrace us and, and to carry us and catch us when we're wrong, oh God, and point us in the right direction. Oh God, we love you today. We pray, God, that something is said that will touch the hearts and minds of everybody in here, that we can carry it out with us, oh God, when we leave here. That we can be stronger and better and, 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 and be able to pour into the life of somebody else in Jesus' name. You know, when we stand in judgment against anybody, truly we stand in judgment against ourselves. When we're ready to throw stones at people, we need to analyze ourselves before we toss anything. When those thoughts come into our minds, we need to question ourselves and take a good look in the mirror because all of us are guilty. The Bible says that at our best, we are as filthy rags when it comes to being righteous. So let's look at our text this morning, John, the eighth chapter, verses one through 11. And it reads, I'll read it in your hearing, you can follow me on the screen. And it says, Jesus went into the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he again into the temple. And all the people came unto him and sat down and taught them. And as the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery, in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. 
But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself, and he saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are thine accusers? Have no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. You know, Jesus spent a good portion of his ministry ministering to people. And even the night before, he was, before this, he was in prayer for a good while. And he, he was seeking the Lord for direction and, 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 and what to do. And, and so he probably really felt in his spirit something was about to occur where he was going to be challenged. Anybody ever had that feeling come over you in prayer? You know that seemingly everything is going well, things are going like they're supposed to go. Then all of a sudden, here's this feeling that something's about to happen, you're about to be tested, you're about to be, you know, and, and sometimes it just comes on without, with, without any warning at all. Yeah. But Jesus has been in prayer, and here the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees bring him. He's in the temple teaching. He's up before the people, the people are all there, they're seated, they're listening to him, and he's going forth, and he's teaching. And, and, and the, the scribes and the Pharisees interrupt the service. They're in worship. And the religious leaders come in and interrupt the service. It would be like one of the bishops or a superintendent or somebody would come in here and say, Hold it, Pastor Pendleton, we got a question for you. What should we do in this situation here? You know, the timing was off. But, you know, when, 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 when people want what they want, they don't care about the time. They will cut in and say or do whatever is necessary to fulfill their needs. Why? Because they're selfish. They have their own agenda. They have things that they want. Hallelujah. Anybody ever dealt with anybody like that? And, you know, am I talking to somebody this morning? You know, sometimes we are in situations and we are head on focused on what we're doing and people will interrupt you. They don't care how deep you are or how serious you are in what you're doing, but they will come in and interrupt you for what's something that they want. Hallelujah. I mean, sometimes if, if it's an emergency, I get it, but sometimes it's not an emergency. They just want you to answer or they don't want to interrupt you. You know, you're about your purpose. You're about your father's business and somebody comes in and sidelines you. Sometimes with some nonsense. And these folks came in. They knew the law. They knew what was supposed to be done. But they wanted to see what Jesus would do. What would Jesus do? Amen. Hallelujah. I see many a wristband, many a bumper sticker. What would Jesus do? So in the midst of this atmosphere of worship, people were locked in. My mind takes me to where Jesus was in, I believe it was Simon Peter's house. No, Martha and Mary. And Mary was working in the kitchen, and Martha was sitting at the feet, or I might have it backwards. But one of them was tuned in to what was being said, tuned in to the Lord, tuned in to the Word of God. They were focused, head on. And the other one came in and said, Jesus, I'm out here busting my butt trying to get everything set up for you, and she's in there working. How come you don't have her to help me? And he said, you chose, you know, you chose to do what you want to do, but the other one chose what was more important. The Word of God is important. We need to Take time and not let anybody interrupt us from our study. Study to show yourself approved unto God and work with the need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. From our prayer life, man, I always pray and not faint. So when we have those sudden interruptions, when we have those situations that happen that catch us off guard, we can still stand flat-footed and hold our faith or hold our hands on the plow and, and, and stand fast in faith. Because life happens. Life can shove you right off of where you think you need to be or where you know you need to be. And if you're not rooted and grounded in the word, guess what? You're subject to fail in certain circumstances. Amen, somebody. Some people fall by the wayside. It doesn't matter how long you've been studying. It doesn't matter how long you've been saved. How, how often you go before the Lord in prayer. If you're not truly rooted and grounded. It's not about... Uh, 
It's not about the practice of what we do, even though we need to participate in prayer, we need to practice prayer on a regular basis. It's not about practicing the word of God, but we need to have this thing rooted and, 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 and tied down in us. And a lot of times, a lot of people are around the church. They come in the building, but they don't have the church in them. And you see it when it, when, when it manifests in certain actions, certain situations happen in their life, and they reach back to the old man wow. instead of allowing the new man to lead them and guide them. Hallelujah. Allowing the Holy Spirit to lead them and guide them. They reach back, and they find themselves in trouble. So here we are in this situation, the scribes, the Pharisees. They interrupt the service. They bring this woman and they say, Jesus, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. She was caught in the act. They were there, you know, and, and, and how should we handle this? So they knew that Moses had gave the authority for a woman or for anybody caught in the act of adultery, they could be stoned to death. But for Jesus to do that, Jesus would go against his own personal law of grace that he's been preaching. Okay, and so, so it creates a conflict. And that's where a lot of people try and get us into a place of conflict. See what we can do. They move us off of what we say we believe. We're in our faith zone. I'm highly favored. I'm blessed with God. How you doing, man of God? I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. Anointed, appointed, ready to do, you know, what God called me to do. And somebody say something, like, what? <laughs> you know, and, 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 and you know, and, and when we get there, you, <laughs> you're right about it. You know, we, we have to guard our tongues and, and, and something, you know, something quick in our minds. Oh man, just pop right up. The stuff come out your mouth that you just don't expect. It happens. This is reality. But God wants us to be in that place where we think Him first, where we see Him first. And sometimes we get questions that position us in a place where people want to trap us and trip us up. But Jesus was already prepared. He was prayed up, he knew, he knew what he was called to do, he knew what was going on, and, and he knew when they came at him with this. He knew that these people, for them to interrupt the service, they didn't care nothing about God, they didn't care nothing about the service, they didn't care nothing about the people of God. And you know, when we study the Pharisees, we know that they were about what they were about while Jesus was trying to be about his father's business, amen? And so, being about his father's business, when they interrupted, Jesus let them know that, that, that he began to write on the ground. And as he wrote on the ground, they looked at him. I can only see this in my mind's eye. You know, they asked a question and he started writing in the dust. They said, what are you doing? He tripping, what are you doing? He ain't paying no attention to us. But those who could see began to see what he was writing. And we don't know what it was that he was writing, but he began to write. And as he was writing on the ground, they were, they were looking at him. And the Bible says they began to walk out one by one, from the eldest to the last. That's what the Bible says. So they saw something that no doubt convicted them. He didn't speak it at that moment, but he wrote it on the ground. And then he said, you without sin cast the first stone. And so we're talking about how we can offend people. We talk about how we can verbally hurt something or actively do something to hurt somebody else who's already in trouble. You know, when people are in trouble, they need help. You see somebody cry out for a particular reason. It's because something is bothering them. Now, they may have bought it, they may have brought it on themselves. A lot of times, they're crying out or they're acting out because something had happened in their life. I had a conversation Friday morning. I was at the coffee shop with my brother-in-law. We sat down and had a cup of coffee and we talk. And the things that we were talking about brought me to a place in my childhood. And my father got killed when he was 15. You know, he, he got stabbed to death 14 times in the back and once in the heart. Okay, a month after, he was supposed to have died in a car accident. Okay, and so I cried the month before till I had no more tears to cry. When he got killed, I had no more tears to cry. I just had anger. And nobody dealt with me in my anger. Nobody dealt with me in my pain. Nobody dealt with me in my frustration. There were places where I act out as a teenager. I did a lot of things. I got involved in a lot of things. 
I did a lot of wrong. You know, a lot of times I just say I've been around the block a few times, jumped a few fences and you know things like that. But I wanted, but I did a lot of things I had no business as a teenager. Yeah. Got deeply involved in drugs and alcohol and, and, and street life. And because in my environment, that's what a lot of people did, yeah. especially adults. It was highly accepted. But that wasn't the goal, that wasn't the future that God had for me. A situation in life knocked me off the place where God had been taking me prior to. And, and, and I did, I'm not saying God called me to preach way back then, but God, I believe God had his hand on my life. But life knocked me off my position. And so there's this place where people judged me. There's this place where people condemned me. There's this place where I said, I don't care. You say what you say, I'm just showing you how much truth I can put into that. You want to put me in this box, I'm going to make this box my own. And make you mad at me. Hey, 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 am I talking to somebody out there? You know, we made some mistakes in life. We've done some things. And so we find ourselves where somebody judged us and pushed us and, 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 and propelled us at the same time to go in a direction that was unhealthy. They brought this woman to Jesus, caught in the act of adultery. She was fornicating when they walked up on her or kicked the doors, and she was in bed with somebody having sex. They caught her in the act of adultery. And so when we look at this, the question comes to my mind, why? Why did they kick the doors? And they probably knew what was going on in anyway. Who was the man or where was the man that she was with? Because if she was committing adultery, she wasn't by herself. Okay. So in other words, somebody else was there. Okay. And if she was, wasn't by herself, how did they catch her in that? Did they watch the setup? They saw him and her step into the place to where they were to commit the act, then ran in and grabbed her. You know, was somebody paying attention to somebody else's business? You know, like there's a song out there, you know, take six months to mind your business and six months to leave mine alone. Right. Or better yet, sweep around your own front door. Yeah. You know, a lot of times, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's happening there where people step into other people's business to bring other people down. Yeah. How did they catch you in that? And then the third thing that crossed my mind. Because, you know, back in the day, you know, brother meet a pretty girl and they hanging out. Other brothers would get mad. You know, and, and, and then they, they want to see if they can take her from you. You know, they, you know, was somebody jealous because she was with somebody else and wasn't with them? Or, or maybe he, she had been with them and she wasn't with him no more? You know, uh, you know, what was it that made them feel they need to bring this woman to Jesus? You know, and so these kind of questions cost our mind. You know, you're out there minding your business, handling your business, and somebody wants to say something about you to bring you down. Somebody wants to say something about you to bring you in, put you, put the spotlight on you. You know, I was talking, you point the finger at somebody, you got three pointing back at you. Amen, somebody. And a lot of times, that's a good, that's a good place to go to have praise God. I mean, we need to realize that some business just ain't our business. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then there's things that are our business, and when we're part of that, we try and make it the best that we can, and we do the best that we can to yeah. build and grow it and make it happen like it ought to happen. <laughs> but there's some places that if I'm minding my business, I probably didn't even notice that she was with somebody. And back in the day, the way they wore their wraps over their face and over their head and their clothes, you know, I probably would have thought maybe that was him and his wife that walked that way. You know what I mean? Because I'm minding my business, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, I remember we were in a restaurant one day and we saw a fellow sitting at the counter with a young lady and, and that young lady wasn't his wife. And now we didn't go in looking for them, we went in for lunch. But when he saw us, she got up went to the bathroom, came out and they immediately left. And we looked like, wow, that was deep, you know? You know, I mean, homeboy had been married a year, but you know, that's, that's, that's where he was, you know? But that was his life. I didn't go run and tell everybody. I didn't get on the phone and call the same people that we know that he know. That could have been his cousin. You know, I don't know. I wasn't going to search it out. but none of my witness because I believe what you do in the dark will come to light. God has a way of shining the spotlight on that thing. You don't have to put people on front street. 
And so when we find ourselves here in this situation, they brought this woman to Jesus. And their goal was to, to, to have Jesus trapped. They knew that stoning the woman would be a fringe benefit for them. And the crowd wanted to see that if Jesus would uphold the Mosaic law. Okay, they, they knew the Mosaic law. They wanted to see if Jesus would uphold the Mosaic law. And, and, and the Mosaic law pro prohibits, or, or yeah, the, the Roman law prohibits anybody from killing anybody. But if Jesus upheld the Mosaic law, he would be suggesting to break the Roman law, and he'd be trapped. And so breaking the Roman law, he would be punished for capital punishment. They also violated his law of grace, which I told you a little bit ago, it would violate what he's been preaching and teaching on how we're supposed to treat one another. And he said, let her go. He would be violating the Mosaic law because she was caught in the wrong. So they thought they had him. So what Jesus did, he began to write on the ground. And they all began to leave one by one. The Bible says, again, from the eldest to the least. And you have to listen to people when you talk to people. Because people will try to paint you in a corner. People will try to paint a picture of you. You know, I, there was a phone call. And somebody called somebody a liar. Just go this week. Said, God told me that you're lying. Wow. And now this person is known to fight just about everywhere they go. Known to say things that are not true. But they told somebody who has good character that they are a liar. And, and, and forgive me, but that might be where this is coming from. You know, and, and, and okay. I mean, because it is, it, it's a reality. Yeah. You know, we're, we're judging people, and then you want to, when, when, when you know you're standing in right, mm -hmm. you know, you want to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. But when you're righteous right. and you believe God, yes. Yes. God will defend you. Yes. 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 See, yes. Sister Belinda Bassan last week said, God will pick up the slack. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And we have to understand what that means. There's a reality in that. But we have to believe God. And in believing God, I might not like the position that I am, but when I know that I'm walking in righteousness, I don't care what nobody says. You know, don't put your hands on me, but I don't care. You say what you want to. You know, I don't stand on those saying stick and stones break my, you know, stick and stone break my bones, but words will never hurt me. I don't stand on that because words can kill you. Wow. Just like words can heal you. Yeah. But there's situations people say that will cause you to feel something deep down inside. And if you let that seed of frustration find root and grow in yeah. you. It can cause bitterness that will last a long time. And so you have to understand how to pull that thing up, root it out, and get it out. Because these things are real. I don't know what this woman did after Jesus told her to go and sin no more. I don't know how often she walked through town to get water, whether she got her water in the midday so she wouldn't be bothered with everybody else. Or if because of God, because Jesus forgave her, she got up in the morning and went and got water like all the other women. I don't know what she did. But I know the news went out that she was caught in adultery. And if people back then are like people today, when you see somebody, you say, hey, that's the woman who was caught in adultery. Hey, that's so and so. That's the woman who was caught in adultery. Hey, that's that guy who got busted for drugs. That's that guy who just got out of jail after 20 years. That's this, that's that, that's this. Because that's how people do. That's, that's the humanity without God. And sometimes it's the humanity with, 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 with shallow grace in God. You know, we, we trip sometimes. We, you know, we can't help but share something. We feel like we have to say something. So I don't know what this woman did, but I believe that when she walked away and Jesus said, go and sin no more, she probably felt pretty good about living. Not so much that she got away, but that the man of God and the house of God forgave her 
and told her to go on about her life, but sin no more. In other words, your sins have been forgiven. You know, you take your sins and place them in the sea of forgetfulness, never to be drawn up again. Y'all know how deep the dialogue went and how much he explained to her, how theological he got behind what he said talking to her. I just know what the Bible says. And so when he says, go and sin no more, he challenged her to move from where she's been to where she's going. And I think that's the challenge on this morning, that a lot of things that we need to leave behind us sometimes. We need to move on from where we've been, some past hurts, some past pain. As I said, I was hurt when I was a young man. And there was a time right after I got saved that I began to realize where my pain came from. You know, for years and years, around May 23rd, this coming weekend, I would get in trouble, I'd find myself in arguments, I'd find myself in fights, you know, you get in the pool, pool hall or one of those places and, and, you know, all of a sudden just chip on my shoulder, attitude come out, things go crazy and, you know, you might wind up in jail or, or all kinds of things. This was the weekend. And so after I got saved, everything was smooth and I was wondering, why am I feeling like this? But I began to realize this is the weekend where my father got in key. This is the weekend where I suffered devastation and I suffered hurt. Yeah. And there was nobody there for me to, to, to talk to about it. And because it lasted so long, there was no place for me to open up. And everybody was like, you know, hey, man, you know, yeah. you'll be all right. You okay? You just have a drink, smoke a joint. You know, do this, do that, do this, do that. You know, to where you kind of wonder. You just go past it. But all of a sudden, there's this aura that comes yeah. over you. Yeah. You know, you ever hear a song? And the smell of a flower comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Or, or you, 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 you're in a place and it's like deja vu and everything around you seems yeah. the same. Yeah. You know, when I was 17, I was a low rider. We all hung out on my bloody street. We had them weeping willows with the little purple vines on them. Mm -hmm. And so every now and then, depending upon what I'm doing, I hear a song on the radio and it takes me back and I can smell those trees. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, wow, this is weird. I'm on the freeway on the 60. Ain't nothing down here but cow town. And, and I'm smelling this tree, you know? And, 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 you know, things come back. You know, and that's a positive experience. But sometimes those negative experiences come back the same way. And that's where we stand on scripture. That's where with joy we draw from the wells of salvation and reach into what God has poured into us. And allow God to pick up the slack. Amen. Because sometimes those places take us back to something. That, that's hurtful, is mindful, and, and or, or we, we all of a sudden feel we got an attitude and we want to talk to somebody some kind of way. And we don't know why we're feeling this way, but we find ourselves sniffing, snapping, and poking, and throwing darts for no reason at all. But something happened. Yeah. This person has done absolutely nothing to you, but you kind of let them have it. Boom, you're throwing darts, throwing darts, throwing darts. Am I the only one? No, no. Uh, okay, somebody say amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. amen. Yeah. amen. Yeah. You know? And so we. Are looking how to live this thing. We're looking how to walk upright before God. It's not an easy walk all the time. And so because we deal with life and we deal with so many situations, we deal with heavy situations and, and, and we're trying to figure out how to do life on a level in 2021 where God is taking us somewhere and we're not sure where God is taking us because he didn't give us a road map and directions. You know, sometimes I can hit the GPS in my car and I got a blue line that tells me where to go and something that tells me where to make a right turn or a left turn. Or I can hit the other button where it says directions. And you can read the directions step by step. But in this walk, as we walk by faith, there's no button we can hit to say step by step. This is what you do. This is how you do it. This is how you maintain your peace. This is how you maintain your joy. You know, I mean, we, we, we read about it. But it doesn't tell us that life is going to get in the way of your joy. It doesn't tell us that pain is going to get in the way of your going. It doesn't tell us that. But we experience it, and so we reach back in prayer and say, God, you have to help me in this. We say, God, you have to help me in this. I can call Brother Duke for some consoling. I can talk to my wife for some consoling. And, and I said, baby, you know, uh, this is what I'm dealing with. Because I'm a man, I don't do that too often. You know, a little manly pride sometimes. But, you know, it's like sometimes I need to do that. Say, honey, this is where I am. I need your help right now. You need to pray for me because I'm not on good ground right now. You know, I, I'm in not, not in a great place and, and I'm uncomfortable. 
about situations that's going on around me and I need your prayer. You know, I need, and, and, and it's difficult to open up sometimes. But that's what we need to do because God is looking. He's there for us. They thought they were bringing this woman to Jesus to condemn her. But Jesus didn't condemn her. You know why he didn't condemn her? Why? Scripture says he came not to condemn the world, but through him that the world might be saved. And so we need to understand as Christians, as Bible thumping believers, as scripture caring believers, full of the word, full of the knowledge of God, full of the power of God, the anointing of God. It's not our job to condemn, but it's our job to, 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 to embrace. It's our job to show compassion. It's our job to show concern. Let people know that we love, that we care. And, and then share the burden sometimes. We need to, you know, we, we, we need to get in and see how we can put our arm, our shoulder under their arm and carry some folks because they need to be carried. Not just chastise and tell them this is what you do and how you do it. You know, we need to show love and compassion. You know, the, Jesus wrote on the ground. And there's three things that from reading, you know, I was in several commentaries over the last two days, and one of the, one of the scholars suggested there's three possible hypotheses. It says, one, maybe Jesus wrote the sins of the scribes and the Pharisees. But it was a crowd there, and, you know, he wrote the sins of the scribes and the Pharisees. That's one said, maybe he wrote down the Ten Commandments. And the third one, maybe he wrote a message to the Pharisees. We don't know what he wrote. All we know is the Bible says he scribbled on the ground. He wrote something. And they began to walk away. But I want to share these three points with you. And then we're going to close, all right? It says, first point. Jesus bestowed on the woman mercy instead of justice. He gave the woman mercy instead of justice. We need to learn how to be merciful yes. in situations. I mean, we can tell people the truth, but you know, the truth can hurt somebody. The Bible says a brother offended could be harder to be won than a defense city. But I just told the truth. You know, I mean, you know, I, you know hey, wake up. You know, I mean, you know, that, 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 that doesn't work. Number two, he forgave her. Anybody in here is forgiven? Anybody in here is forgiven? You know, I thank God for forgiveness. You know, I started using drugs when I was nine years old. Alcohol. Following a group of guys a little older than me. Every step of the way. When I was over there by Manuel Arch, your high school. Found a bundle of weed, took half of them, showed them to my brother, and he took that half. I said, okay, it is what I thought it was. So him and his buddies went and got high, me and my buddies went and got high. Nine years old. And from there, I just followed the track till I was 31 years old. God saved me. God saved me. You know, for the first time in my life, I was really sober. You know what I mean? I, I mean, there were days where I was sober, didn't get high. I'm not talking about that time. sober. I'm talking about sober in my thinking. Able to see light from a real perspective. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and experience freedom. My, when I got saved, my wife said, it ain't gonna last. And I said, hey, I'm free for the first time. You know, and I think as song was out back then, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, no more chains holding me. You know, and, and, and that was real in my life. It was real in my life. You know, I look back over all of those things that I, 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 I had to deal with, you know, and I didn't care what nobody said. My boy said, hey, he'll be back. Yeah. You know, so-and-so got saved in jail, and he's back. He, he got saved over there, and, you know, he's back. And I'm like, hey, man, I'm free. I'm free. I know what that life offers. I've done just about all of that stuff, so now I want to see what this life offers, and I'm free. Yeah. Going on 30, got saved in 81, 86. This is 21, what's that, 35 years? <laughs> no drugs, no alcohol, no and, 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 and not bragging, I'm thankful. Yeah, yeah. I'm thankful. Yeah. And so when somebody condemns me, I don't care. Because I'm free. I analyze what's being said. I look at what's being said and say, okay, is it me or is it them? 
I don't pop off at the mouth. I used to be quick at the tongue. Tariq would tell you, my wife would tell you, you come out of a family where everybody's quick tongue, sharp, know how to cut you down. You know, and, 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 and it gets hard without profanity. But we know how to do it, you know, and, and so I don't use profanity, haven't used profanity, and so it's, it's just easy to just be cool, calm, and collected. You know, Gwen has known me probably just about all of those years. In fact, she knew me before I got saved. You know, Thanksgiving, and my cousin lived a block and a half from her. I'd go to his house, get high all day long, go over her house and eat dinner. You know, and because her mom was a good cook. And, you know, I mean, and that's how it was. You know, I'm just, I'm just being honest. But when God saved me, yes. he broke the chains off of my life. He delivered me and set me free. Hallelujah. We look at what God can do. You know, we, we, sometimes we need people in our environment to look at and say, that's what God can do. Hallelujah. I thank God for her mother who left a legacy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. A praying woman man, yeah. who, who poured into my life very early on, who, who gave me something to hold on to when let nobody else give me nothing. Yeah. Women in my life gave me something to drink yeah. and a plate of food. Mm -hmm. But her mother gave me scripture, gave me prayer, showed me how to pray, taught me how to pray through example. We need that in our life. We got women in here who need to be that example in their children's yeah. life, in their children's yeah. friends' life. Yeah. Need to be somebody that people can come in and talk to. Yeah. Show some compassion. Don't condemn it. Don't judge. No, we don't like Johnny. I don't like what Johnny's about. But I'm going to sit down and talk to Johnny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My son Bill, his friend, told him, he said, man, your dad's a trip. He said, my dad won't say nothing to me except go to the box and give me a beer out of the refrigerator. That's all they'll say to me. He said, but your dad want to know how my day was, how I'm going in school, how's this, how's that, how's this, you know? And that's what we need to do to these kids. Yeah. Make them think somebody cares yeah. about them, somebody loves them. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus showed this woman who was caught in the very act of adultery, who by Jewish law deserved to be stoned, yeah. hmm. set her free, yeah. mentally, spiritually, psychologically. These three points. He bestowed mercy instead of justice. Thank you, Jesus. He forgave her like we need to forgive other people. Yeah. Third, he challenged her to go and sin no more. Yeah. You know, it's our prayer that we can stand in that kind of faith and believe God for the healing yeah. that a lot of people need. I don't know what this woman was, her, her, her situation was that put her out there yeah. the way that she was, to allow herself to be caught in the act of adultery. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says we all have sinned yes. and fallen short of the yes. glory of God. Yes. And if we want restoration, or we want to see restoration in the lives of somebody else, we're going to have to know how to forgive. Yeah. We're going to have to know how to pray and seek the Lord in our conversations yeah. that we have with people. Yeah. As we are talking and communicating with people, being that example. I say it all the time. We're like a city. You sit on a hill. that can't be here. Yeah. Yeah. People are looking at us. People are looking yeah. at you to see if you are the Christian that you say you are. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to know a few scriptures and view life from a biblical perspective based on just the limited knowledge that we have. But it's another thing to pray and ask God to lead me in my walk as I'm dealing every day before people. I mean, there are times where somebody has totally upset me and I held my tongue, not out of fear, but it's kind of like, what would Jesus do? And what I'm feeling, I know that wasn't his reaction to the situation. And so it's better for me to be thought of fool than to prove it. You know, and, 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 and I shouldn't say that like that, but there's some reality to that. Because yeah. when that man jumped out of his car the other night, I felt him. Yeah. You want to jump out your car? I got my wife in the car with me, so I ain't nobody scared of you. You know? I mean, that, that's, that's how I felt. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm thinking, you know, hey, this thing could turn out differently than what I expect. I just need to go on my, my, my business and move on, you know? Not running, but just move on. Yeah. Let his pressure come down, and I get where I'm going, and everybody go home safe. You know, and, and so sometimes we have to think. We have to think along that line. Yeah. Amen. I pray that something was said to encourage you on this morning. Yeah. I pray that you know, as, we, as we look at life, yeah. as we look at life in this situation, 
Because you got a lot of people out here today who want to challenge you for a lot of different reasons. You don't look like they look, you don't dress like they look, you don't wear what they wear. You know, I, y'all know I ride my motorcycle and I do my thing, you know. And, you know, I go some places and you got some guys out there that look at you like you're crazy. You get off your bike and they all got their bikes and they look at you like, you know, who are you? Yeah. You know, where you come from? And you know, I come over here to give me a hamburger. Mind my business. I, I just want a hamburger and a soda, and I'm gonna get back on my bike and ride. And they, they all stand there like, <laughs> you know. And in my mind, I said, well, I wish I was the Terminator. I'd take all these tunnels out. You know? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. I mean, but you know, you, you see stuff and you be like, you know what? It, it, it ain't about that. You know, can we really just have a little bit of fun? You know, can we just, you know, and, and the people trip. You know, you go someplace and, and, and it's amazing. Yeah. But we want to keep God first in all that we do. Yeah. We want to keep God first in all that we do. We want him top shelf in our mind. We don't want to put him on the back burner and bring him out on Sundays. That's right. You know, we do that through reading the scripture. Mm -hmm. We do that through praying. Yeah. And, and, and not a systematic prayer where we just get ready to go to Vietnam and out and pray the Lord so we keep or our Father which are in heaven. But you know, if we're going to pray that for our Father, we need to look at what it's saying. Look at what it's saying, because it's it's packed with a whole lot. Yeah. And so we need to understand what we're saying. You know, when we read the Scripture, you know, Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. What is God saying to us? You know, Acts what, twenty-seven, seventeen. It's in Him that we live, we move, and have our being. What is God saying to? Proverbs 3, 5, 6, and all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. Well, God, I feel the pressure to go this way. That's not the direction I'm going right now. You know, God's trying to direct you somewhere. And you say, well, that's not what I want. You know, and so we need to understand what is God saying to us? We're living in a, it's an amazing time right now. Because there's people who have the word who are not right. There are people who don't know the word, trying to do right by their own understanding, yeah. and it's crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're fighting each other. Yeah. And we're caught in the middle of trying to be the light of the world, as Jesus has so positioned us, but we have to pray on how to step into these environments, mm -hmm. how to walk in these environments, to encourage, to lead, look at people on both sides, don't judge them, but see how we can embrace them and bring them closer to the light. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it could get a whole lot worse than what it is right now. Amen, somebody. Amen. Here, let's pray. Everybody stand on your feet. Father, we thank you again for who you are in our lives. We pray, Father, something was said. Father, as we look out at the world, we pray that we don't find ourselves in the situation that this woman in John 8, 1 through 11 found herself. We pray, Father, we don't find ourselves in the places of the Pharisees and the scribes and those that were holding stones. But God, we ask for a heart like Jesus, that we can learn to show compassion in tough situations where maybe there's facts and things that support condemnation. But God, we can stand in love and offer freedom in a situation that will bring a whole new life to somebody else's life, oh God. Touch us, Father, as we communicate with people. And then, God, give us to look on ourselves internally to make sure that we don't, we don't carry the badge of self-righteousness, mm -hmm. that we don't carry the badge of pride, mm -hmm. thinking we're better than somebody else or, we're, or, or above somebody else. But God, touch right now. Lord, if there be any wicked way in us, take it out. Let us be free in our mind, free in our spirit, free to love, free to laugh, free to have joy in the Holy Ghost, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Father, if there be one under the sound of my voice that's not saved, we ask that you would save today. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we give thanks. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Sister Pillar is going to come with the uh, few announcements, and we're going to be ready to make our way home. Praise the Lord. Thank God for that word on this morning. Yes. God is so good. Amen. Word, word. Um, Thank you. Call in the act. Caught in the act. Yes. I mentioned it.
say some of us here have been caught in the act. Hallelujah. So we ought to learn to show mercy and not justice. Show mercy and not justice. Don't be so quick to say, well, you did this and you deserve that. Show mercy. Show mercy. Amen. Because that's, that's WWJD. What would Jesus do? Amen. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for such an awesome word on this morning. It is time to give. Amen. Yes. There are some of you who are giving um, via the envelope way here today. Jacob uh, Penners will be able to take that offering from you. There are several other ways that you are able to give, and I will be reviewing those in just a moment. But I just want to remind you on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock p.m., we have our Word Empowerment class via Zoom. That is a Word Empowerment class taught by Minister Duke Walker. It is an awesome study. We ask that you join us. Tell somebody about the Word Empowerment class. Um, it's via Zoom, and you can find out how to join us by going to the Dayspring Ministries website at www.dayspringm.org, www.dayspringm.org. And once again, we want to say thank you for all of our online partners and viewers. We thank God for you, uh, those of you that come consistently and tune in to the Word of God as Pastor Bill is speaking through the unction of the Holy Spirit. We thank God for you, and if you are joining online, push like, love, and share. We still need you to do that. Like, love, and share the word with somebody so they may be blessed, changed, and strengthened in their spirit. Amen. And if you would like to give, if you want to pay a tithe on today, there are several ways by which you may do so. You may go to Cash App, and that is uh, One Day Spring, One Day Spring, or you may pay your tithe or give your offering via the U.S. Post Office, and you may go, you may send that offering to uh, Day Spring Ministries, P.O. Box 432, Menifee, California, 92583. 92583. Am I reading the 38? Three I cannot read that right. 9253. I have on my glasses, but I cannot read it, so somebody will make it larger for me next week. Amen. 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 I'm doing the very best that I can. It's right in front of me. Pastor Bill put it right here. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Amen. Or you may give. Me. Or you may give online. You may go to dayspringyum.org and click the give tab and follow the prompts. That's dayspringministries.org and press the give tab and you may follow the prompts. If you want to take to give, go to nine five. Go to give one hundred. This is a new one. So if you want to text to give, it says give one text give one hundred to nine five one three six five five three eight three. Again, text GIVE100 to the numbers 951-365-5383 to get started. Amen. All minds clear? We thank God for his word on today. Amen. We thank God that Pastor Bill has brought a sound word, and we hope he has said something that will bless you throughout the week, and you can take it, take it with you and be blessed and share it with someone. Reminder, faithfulness is the price of the crown. Let us all do our very best to support the entire program of our church. We want to see you on Sunday as well as throughout the week. And if you will, we would like to have Minister Duke come and to dismiss us on this morning. God bless you. Please stand with me so that we may be dismissed. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you as always, Lord. We humbly come before you. We come to your throne, Lord. Thank you for what an awesome word, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would allow this word to penetrate our minds, our hearts, Lord, that we may be obedient, Lord. You said, Lord, that you would withhold no good thing that those would walk upright, Lord. And so we're, we're asking you, Lord, to forgive us, Lord. We're asking you, Lord, to give us the ability to be able to forgive other people. And Lord, we're asking you, Lord, that as we meditate on this word, Lord, as we take this word in it, as we have been so eloquently fed by our bishop, the pastor of this house, Lord, we thank you. We give you thanks, Lord. Now we're asking, Lord, for the application of the word that was given to us on this morning, Lord, that we can go and walk in obedience, Lord, and we can shed light on dark places, Lord. We will allow people to come into the house of the Lord, introduce people to your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. 
And we're going to continue to give you all the thanks yes. and all the glory. Yes. And we ask you to continue to have mercy and grace on us, Lord, yes. as we continue to yes. share that mercy yes. and grace throughout this yes. world, right here on earth, Lord. And we will give you all the praise and honor in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.